So we've learned a little bit about pen tools and moving sprites around the screen and having little trails of pen um, running behind them to create interesting art. I'm going to talk now about using operators to make some of that a little more interesting or to make it look or actually be random. Uh, that's one of my favorite things to use. So if you notice here there is a section called operators. Now this is going to be something that we start using now but that you probably will want to use later in your game projects or perhaps another project. So under operators you'll see basically what looks like uh, some math options. So we have plus, we have minus, we have this is a times which is represented in computer science as an asterisk. You might have used a digital calculator that does that. Um, we have division, we have pick random, we have less than, equal to, greater than, we have these two things. We're going to deal with some of these others later. Um, right now I'm just going to use the random operator. So I have over here some script where we set our pin size, we have a starting point, we put our pin down, and then I've put some glides and some change pin in here. Um, and what I'm going to do, instead of telling the um, little ladybug that I have over here exactly where to go, I'm going to let that be uh, random so that it will create something kind of interesting potentially. So I'm going to drop this. If, the, if, if your operator has um, round edges like this, it can be put in these slots where there are also round edges. You'll notice that some of these right here in the middle, they have these little pointy edges. We're going to talk about those at another time. So I'm going to put a pick random in there and I'm going to do these two. So first of all, um, your, what this does is it picks a random x coordinate and right now it's picking from 1 to 10. Well, there's a lot more than 1 to 10 in terms of x coordinates on our screen. In fact, it goes to about minus 240 to positive 240. So we could pick a random um, selection between those two points, minus 240 to positive 240. And our y coordinates are about the same. They go for, uh, to about 180 on either end. Minus 180 to plus 180. Now I put the um, minus first because that's less than this one. Um, I don't think Scratch really cares. I haven't actually tried it, but in most programming you have to put the lowest number first when you're choosing a, a random range of numbers and then the highest number. And of course a negative number is always lower than a positive number. So I have random selection here. I'm going to add our flag and let's just see what that does. Now these are going to take it back to its starting point so it's not going to be all that exciting. Um, but we're going to give it a shot. So it went to a random point and it goes back. So we could continue and we could put random points in these other selections. Um, but what might be a little bit easier, I'm going to take these off. I'm going to keep the change pen color. I'm going to drop these. Um, one thing that we learned about uh, in the last section, uh, and we've done this a couple of times now, is our repeat block, which loops uh, something a number of times. I'm actually going to use a forever loop here, and I'm just going to put that around the these two items, the gliding to a random spot and changing a pen color. Now changing the pen color by 10, eh, let's try changing it by a random amount from 10 to let's say about 30. So what's going to happen here is this is going to go forever. It's only going to do this part once, which is what we want. And actually if you'll remember we have our clear, let's clear at the beginning. So what's going to happen is this bug is going to go forever. It's going to glide around randomly on the screen and it's going to change the pen color randomly. So if I click the flag, it goes up there 
and you can see it's moving around and changing color and that's kind of fun. Some of these spots are not very far away. So that looks pretty cool, sort of interesting. Another thing you could do is make this glide be random so that it goes um, either faster or slower. Another thing you might do, if you remember the last time we put some turns in there, so you could do that as well. We could put a turn 15 degrees and move a few steps. Um, and we could make that random as well. So our degrees go from 1 to 360, which is a full circle. Um, but that might not be the best thing to do. Let's start at about 30 and let's go up to about 90. And steps, I think we're going to leave this not random and have it move like 30 steps. Now I actually don't know what this is going to look like. It could look really bad or it could look really interesting. So let's find out. And you can see that it rotates a little bit. It's not creating circles like it does before and that's because of this glide function. So if we took that glide function out, what we would probably end up with is something, yes. So now our bug is going in random circles. And it's going pretty fast. That looks kind of interesting. Um, we could change this a little bit. Uh, we could make it move more steps. That would give us more space between our rotations. So let's try that. Yeah, that looks a little bit better. Kind of funny looking. So there you go. So you can play around with these random movements um, for your motion. Um, you can also do this for other things, which we'll show you a little bit later. Um, but play around with the random option and add it to create some interesting visual effects.